Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is gonna be a bit of a mixture. It's gonna be an oldie, but a new one. Also, we are canning up our raw packed pork. This stuff is fantastic, and I wanted to make sure that I still shared it with you guys. I have some older videos that I filmed when I lived, back when I lived in Washington, and I asked you guys if you guys still wanted to see those videos, and so uh, here they are because you guys said yes. I was editing that video today, and I realized two different things. The first one, I babbled on for about 20 minutes at the beginning of the video, and I don't want to include that, so we're not going to. And the second thing is that I did not film an ending because I had planned on bringing you guys back and sharing with you guys the incredible seal. Also, I'm going to throw in here a bonus of my favorite way to actually cook this. You might look at this and be like, oh my gosh, that's ugly, because it is. But it doesn't matter because it's freaking delicious. And if you guys ever bought some canned pork from the store, this is what it looks like on the inside. It doesn't really matter. It's just because you can see through it. It's amazing. It's delicious. In this video, we canned with our four jars canning lids. These things are fantastic. I've used four jars canning lids almost exclusively since January. I have yet to have a single fail and these things are fan freaking tastic. I love these lids because the composite on the lid is much thicker, but it's not like one of the some of them that, that are like so thick it's like a glob it's for me it's the perfect amount which makes the perfect seal which you guys are going to see here in just a little bit the metal on them is also thicker and it has stainless steel in the composite which makes it much less li likely that it will actually rust four jars canning lids actually the the company came about during the canning lid shortage back in 2020 and honestly since then as well and that's kind of where they came about they wanted canning lids but they weren't available so they're like you know what i'm going to start my own company so that's what they did it's an American-owned company. It's owned in Florida by a Ukrainian immigrant family. They are just fantastic. They're the sweetest people ever, and they genuinely care about their products and they care about their customers. And so they always, they make sure to get the best deal possible on their website. I'm gonna link down below so you guys can check out their website if you want to. You can click on my link and that will get me a small portion of the sale if you choose to do that. If not, cool, you guys can just enjoy an awesome pork canning video. But now is actually the perfect time to stock up because as we all know, August is kind of like the height of canning season, if you, especially if you're a gardener. That's when a lot of stuff comes into season. <laughs> and so you're doing all kinds of fruit preserves, you're doing all kinds of vegetables. It's a good time to can so many different things. If you stock up on your canning lids now, you don't have to worry about it later on in the height of canning season and you run out. As you can see, these come in 100 pack. You can get them in smaller packs if you wish to, but they sell these in 100 packs. Make sure that you guys click on my link down below, and then you're also gonna enter my coupon code FERMENTED10, and that's gonna get you an even further 10% off of your order. So make sure you do that. You'll find all that information linked down below in the description bar, as well as in the first pinned comment down in the comment section below. I just love this company, and I really like to share them with you guys because I just think they're wonderful. They're a wonderful company. They've been investing in the canning community uh, this whole time. They kind of, they don't just take people for granted. Like they actually contribute to the community. They contribute to you guys. They do all kinds of giveaways. They're just a wonderful company. And I really hope that you guys check them out. So enjoy this part of the video and then make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna show you my favorite recipe that I like to do with this canned pork because I'm hungry and I figured it'd be a good time, a good, a good time to make the recipe and a good way to end this video. I'm gonna bring you guys in close. We're gonna cut up all of these. We're gonna fill up as many jars as we possibly can. I think that we will have some extras, honestly. I think this might even be like two canner loads full, if I'm, if I'm guessing. The whole thing was 61.8 pounds. We're doing two of these, so I'm gonna guess it's probably about 15 to 16 pounds give or take, and it's usually a pint is a pound. So I think that we will be getting two canner loads off of this guy. So we're gonna do one canner load tonight, we're gonna get the second canner load ready, and we're gonna throw it in in the morning. We also have a barbecue pulled pork recipe that we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be delicious. This one was inspired by, by, by my sister, Tiffany, over at the Hamakua Homestead. I will link her video down below. Make sure that you check that one out. I'm not using her recipe, but she is literally the only reason that I went out and bought this pork. <laughs> so, cause I was like, I have to try this. And some of the rest, the some of the ingredients that she used in there I can't have right now, like the onions and the garlic and stuff. So I found a recipe that is a little bit more in line with my dietary needs and I figured I would share that with you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and get cracking on chopping these guys up and then I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step on the canning process.
Now that we have all the jars of the pork filled, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it into our canner. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close, kind of show you the process of cleaning off the rims, putting the lids on, and then we're just gonna put them in the canner so we can get that thing going. All right, so the next step to this is just gonna be wiping off the rim. We're gonna make sure, I don't know if you can kind of see, it's got a little, little particles here. We're basically just gonna wipe off the rim to both get rid of any particles that might be left on the rim, as well as cutting any grease, any fat that might be on there. Let's try this little key here. Just wiping off the rim. That's all we're gonna do with that. And again, there's vinegar on the towel. We're gonna put our four jars lid on here. And we're gonna tighten it fingertip tight. And that is basically as tight as you can get it. Let's get to show a good angle. As tight as you can get it with these three fingertips. I put it on here, it's kind of like a built-in torque wrench. As tight as you can go. As long as you do it with your fingertips, you're generally pretty safe. And then into the canner. That is pretty simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and just get through the rest of these and then I'll bring you back for the canning instruction part. We got our canner loaded up. It is totally filled with all of our jars. And so the next, I want to go ahead and show you. These are fairly well packed but you can see there's still gonna be some gaps and these are gonna be filled in with just the liquids that are gonna come out of this. So you can kind of see what it looks like here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get our canner ready to get rocking and rolling. We're gonna look through our vent pipe here, make sure we can see through it completely. Make sure this thing toggles. If you have a Presto, you going to make sure you're checking that and then check, check to make sure that your seal's in good shape. We are a go on all of these. We're gonna put this on here, turn it up to high. When this thing starts to really heat up, this thing is gonna to start to vent steam. When this starts to vent steam, uh, this shortly after this is gonna pop up, and then about a minute later, this is gonna be spewing steam. When this thing starts to spew steam, you're gonna set your timer for 10 minutes. And that time is simply gonna allow the canner to push out all of the air and replace it with steam so it can get up to the proper pressure. If you don't allow that time, uh, the, the air won't come out and it could possibly not get as hot as it needs to get in order to make this safe food because the higher the pressure, the higher the temperature. That's how it works. And we want it to get up to the proper temperature so that we can kill any risk of uh, foodborne illnesses. After the 10 minutes is up, we're gonna put our little jiggler on top of there. For where we are currently, we are at 10 pounds of pressure. You wanna look up whatever your elevation is. If you have a smartphone, you can just go to Google Maps. You can click on your location. It'll tell you exactly what your elevation is. After we put our weight on here, we are going to wait for it to start to kind of jiggle. When this thing gets up to a proper pressure, this thing's gonna start to wobble back and forth. When this thing starts to wobble, you're gonna set your time for 75 minutes for the quart for the pint it'll be 90 minutes if it's the pint we're gonna go ahead and get this thing a cannon i'm gonna bring you guys back tomorrow where we're gonna pull this out of the canner because it is far too late for me to wait for this thing to cool off <laughs> when we're done it's enough for me to actually wait for it to warm up and, and do its thing all right it is the next morning and we are going to go ahead and pull these out of the canner um some of these are still bubbling a little bit uh let me see this one here So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Still bubbling. I, I I turned it off and I just went to bed. I didn't put, wait for it to cool off. I didn't pull the weight off, none of that. Did all that this morning. It had only been like five hours. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. So it's not been too terribly long. So I wanted to bring you back and show you because I'm just pulling out my second load from the canner and I wanted to show you how crazy these things will bubble if you get them out right away. And there's also going to be a tremendous amount of fat in these jars. We're going to start out with a whole head of cabbage. This seems to be the perfect ratio for me, a head of cabbage to a can, uh, a jar, a jar of pork. This is the perfect, perfect ratio. And I can't remember if I didn't tell you guys earlier, this is like, a, it's like an egg roll in a bowl kind of, you can, you could take this any way that you want to. You could make this like an Asian style inspired. You could totally add like taco spices. You can make it like Mexican style. You can do all kinds of stuff. And you can add ferments to it at the end to make it even more umami. It's freaking delicious. 
want to make sure that our oven is, or our stove is turned on. We're just going to cut this up into little shreds, almost like you're making sour crow. Got my home canned chicken broth. Put that in there, I like it a little salty. All right, it's starting to steam, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our cabbage in, and we're just going to kind of let it wilt. We just want to kind of cook it down a bit. You don't want to make it super soft. I don't want to make it super soft. You can do what you wish. That's the whole idea of cooking from home. You can make it how you want it. And once you get the hang of it, you don't even want to go out to dinner because you can cook better than any restaurant. Not to say I'm a fantastic cook, but like I make it exactly how I want it, which makes it delicious. So the time has come. We are ready to pop the top on our four jars, canning lids, and let's do this, okay? Ready? You hear that? Like that is a seal. That is super tight and it is freaking phenomenal, okay? So I think we got this stuff going here. We're gonna go ahead and just dump this in and kind of let the flavors kind of incorporate, you know? Let them meld, let them mush. Whoa. No. While well, that is warming up, we're gonna pick out our spices. We've decided we're gonna go with uh, more of an Asian theme here. And so we're gonna do some cayenne pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, ginger powder, and we're gonna add in a bit of fish sauce and some coconut aminos, which is just a soy sauce substitute that doesn't have any soy in it. Oh, and I'm probably gonna add in some nutritional yeast as well just for kind of a cheesy flavor. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna start adding in our spices. And we're gonna do, I like heat, so if you don't like this much heat, don't do it. I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of cayenne powder. And we're not gonna add in any salt because the fish sauce and the coconut aminos have a lot of salt in them. And I've learned the hard way, don't add salt or at least, very least, add it to taste when you're, when you're done. Okay, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of ginger, a little bit less, it can, it can be intense. Okay, and then we're gonna, add, we're gonna start out with a tablespoon of coconut aminos and a tablespoon of fish sauce. The fish sauce is like, it's like a, I'm pretty sure it's like a fermented kind of a sauce that is just very, I could be wrong about the fermented part, but I think I'm not. But anyways, it's just, it's got a nice umami kind of flavor. Like it just gives it that like, oh my gosh, that's good kind of quality. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's mix this up. You want a close up? You want to see what I'm cooking here? You want to just see my face? There we go. Okay, so, tongs are the best way to stir this kind of thing up, I found. We're just gonna stir it up enough to kind of incorporate the flavors and the the, the, uh, the seasonings to see if we got it right. And when you do, we'll just put the lid on, let it kind of marinate for about five minutes and go from there. Smells good. Smells good. To start. Let's add some more yeast. Or some yeast. If you guys don't know about nutritional yeast, it is wonderful. It's kind of, it's mainly consumed by like, like the vegan community and those who are lactose intolerant. But if you are either of those, this is a great way to add like a cheesy flavor without any lactose, without any, and it does have calories, but it has significantly less calories than the equivalent amount of cheese that it would take to give the cheesy flavor. We're getting there. Let's add a little more fish sauce. One more tablespoon. I don't usually measure this sort of thing, but I'm only measuring it for you guys. That's why I'm kind of like guessing on the amounts because I usually just glug it in there. Okay, so another tablespoon of each. I'll link the whole recipe down below by the end of this so you will know, um, so you can just like go down there, look and see the exact amounts that we ended up with. This is kind of just how I do it. I just add a little here, a little there. I think I'm gonna need more heat but I wanna get it all stirred up before I know for sure. A little bit more heat, 
and we have achieved our goal. Oh, I forgot lemon juice. Hold on. Yeah, we'll call that another half tablespoon. You want to add some kind of an acidic medium, some kind of vinegar. Um, I'm adding some lime juice, about a tablespoon. It kind of just helps to, it unlocks the flavors kind of. It's really hard to explain, but it basically, it helps to unlock a lot of the flavors and some of the nutrients as well in your food that you're cooking. So, mm. You have no idea what just adding that little bit of, of an acidic medium can do to your stir fry. This is so good. Holy smokes. Okay, let me get a double. Oh. So this entire recipe from start to finish took 12 minutes. So that is the power and the convenience in canning your proteins, canning anything really. You can just add in some fresh ingredients, add in the cooked meat and it tastes phenomenal. And it took such little time. Like I'm literally sitting here in the middle of the day editing, I got stuff going on. I don't have time to sit here and cook down a pound of, pound of pork. Like I can just throw it in there and let it all marinate together and it is delicious. One other way that you can amplify the flavor of any dish that you're cooking is adding fermented foods. They contain something called umami, which is basically, um, it's one of the taste bud receptors on your tongue and, and uh, fermented foods really hits that and it, it, it completes a lot of different flavors. So if you're having a hard time really getting foods to come together to taste like, whoa, try adding some fermented foods to it and that will usually do it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys were able to learn something also of how to can as well as how you can make that canned food a convenience in your life. So just make sure that you guys check out my link down below and you guys can get an awesome deal and you guys can support the channel at the same time. So I hope that you guys will consider doing that. If you guys are new around here, we just moved to Missouri from Washington State, which is where the the, uh, the center portion of this video was actually filmed. On this channel, I'm just kind of sharing, sharing the process of turning our Missouri homestead into a home and all the things that we're learning along the way. I also also like to do videos like this on canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting, and videos showing you guys how you can actually incorporate those preserved foods in your everyday cooking. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the subscribe button right here. This is where all the fun happens. When you click this, it'll let you know that we got all the awesome stuff happening. Up here is a video Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're going to enjoy. This is my canning barbecue pork video. Check that one out. I already released that one a while ago. And then up here is my canning playlist. Check that one out for to all kinds more in all types more inspiration. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.